Hey all, good afternoon. Michelle Raza here with the Finding Yourself Book Club. And today we're gonna to continue discussing John Gottman's What Makes Love Last. We've been talking through, working through your messes, big and small. Please do check out our website if you haven't done so already. We're at www.findingyourselfsatx.com. There you can take our life balance questionnaire and then send us an email, call, or text us. You can also just fill out a contact form and we'll be in touch. So we've been discussing working through your messes, big and small. We talked uh, through the overview and we started going into the Gottman Rappaport Blueprint for Constructive Conflict. Um, there we went into, he, it, it conveniently goes uh, into the, um, it's attunement, attune. So it's awareness, tolerance, transforming criticisms into, we, uh, into wishes and positive needs, understanding, non-defensive listen, listening and empathy. And then it's broken out into the speaker's job and the listener's job. So today what we're gonna cover is the speaker's job. Okay? The speaker's job. A in attunement is for awareness. Pay attention to your words and manner to avoid making your partner feel cornered and defensive. Remember, the goal is to discuss the problem without triggering flooding in your partner. Accusations and criticism will only backfire. Here are three pointers to help you remain aware of your delivery style. First, stick to I statements. This advice is so common that it's almost a cliche of marriage counseling, but it's for a good reason. Sometimes during a session with clients, I'll point my finger at each of them and yell, you. Then I ask how I made them feel. They always report an immediate jump in their heart rate or other, <laughs> I'm laughing because I'm wondering if that happened to any of you guys. <laughs> they always report an immediate jump in their heart rate or other negative physical reaction to this experiment. The word you is powerful during conflict discussions and too often its force isn't used for good. Thomas Gordon was the first to make the distinction between complaints that begin with you or I. The chief characteristic of an I statement is that it reflects only the speaker's feelings and experience and avoids criticizing the partner. When you say, I wish you had gotten to the restaurant on time, I felt embarrassed sitting there all alone waiting for you. The focus is on your experience and your perception. This gentler approach increases the odds that your partner will respond without being critical or defensive, and perhaps even apologize. In contrast, a you statement points the finger at the partner's motives, feelings, behavior, or personality. You're so selfish. Obviously, you didn't think about how embarrassing it was for me to sit there all alone. This isn't a statement. It's an accusation. It will trigger defensiveness and make everything worse. Some you statements can be subtle. They may arrive packaged in the form of a question such as, why did you do that? Or, why didn't you do this? Or my favorite, what is wrong with you? Does, it, does anyone really expect their partner to reply? What an excellent question. Hold on and I'll go check. If you want to change your partner's behavior, don't start by saying, you always tease me when I eat dessert, even though you know I hate that. Try something like, could you please praise me when I don't eat dessert rather than tease me when I do? That will make it easier for me to stick to my diet. What matters most is not the pronoun you begin with, but the point is not to criticize your partner. My next suggestion is to specify right away which particular issue or event is under discussion to stay on topic. It can be tempting to lay it all out when you have the floor and your partner is forced to listen. Resist the temptation to let loose over every irritated or irritating or boneheaded move your partner has made since your last meeting or your first date. 
Likewise, I hope you realize how counterproductive it would be to offer your expert analysis of your partner's personality disorders or behavior problems. Stay out of your nasty box and describe the facts of the situation as a journalist would. Here are some examples. The garbage hasn't been taken out. The laptop isn't charged. The kids weren't picked up on time. That's the opposition of, you haven't taken out the garbage, you didn't charge the laptop, you didn't pick up the kids on time. Finally, be sensitive to your partner's triggers. No one escapes childhood without some scars, and these can escalate conflict. UCLA psychologist Tom Bradbury coined the term enduring vulnerabilities to describe these sensitivities. When you're the speaker, keep your knowledge of your partner's weaknesses in your working memory. I tell couples to imagine that every person, not just their partner, is clad in a t-shirt with their enduring vulnerability emblazoned across the front. Some of my favorites are, do not try to improve me with constructive criticism. Want to see defensiveness? Just try blaming me. Don't lecture me and don't say you should to me. If you know your girlfriend is extra sensitive about feeling excluded, be gentle when suggesting she stay home the night of your high school reunion because you want time alone with your old buddies. You could say something like, I love going to events like this with you, but this time I'd like to hang out with my friends. Would that be okay with you? Likewise, if strict housekeeping evokes unhappy memories of his very rigid upbringing, your husband would probably appreciate a break when it comes to his clutter. This is what I call preemptive repair. It lets you avoid the friction before it starts. Your partner's baggage may be a source of great irritation, but it is unrealistic to expect that he or she will ever leave these issues behind. It certainly won't happen at your prodding or insistence on change. Still, you can prevent a particular vulnerability from causing friction by acknowledging it and working around it with compassion. It helps to remember that your partner is learning to do the same for you, or you would hope so anyway. Like all of the attunement skills in the Gottman Rappaport Blueprint, awareness is more than a tool for resolving conflict. By weaving it into everyday interactions, you'll be more likely to turn toward each other. Let your partner know you're aware, tuned in to how he or she is feeling. A simple, what's up, honey? can clear the air and prevent a major storm. But harsh words and phrases such as, what is it now? Or, with you it's always something, isn't it? Will trigger a torrential downpour. So that there was awareness, which I know lots of people in life, lots of people kind of hoke around through life without really being aware. Um, so, I mean, the first step starts with you, right? Being aware of your own self. Do you even know what your enduring vulnerabilities are? It would be important to know that. It would be important to know and think about your childhood and how you came up through life and what what causes you to feel immediately defensive or cornered? Um, because if you don't even know it for yourself, how can you communicate that to your partner? Um, so good stuff here. Next video, we'll continue on the T of attunement for tolerance. Um, again, as I mentioned in previous videos, all of this is super easy in this setting where it's like very academic and we're all very calm and you can think about it. And in the heat of a moment of a fight, it's, it's a lot harder. Um, so have some grace and gentleness with yourself. You're not going to get good at this overnight. Uh, do pick up your own copy if you haven't done so. Follow along with us. There's lots of cool exercises in this book too. Um, and call me if you want to chat. I'd love to talk through this with you more. All right, take care. We'll talk tomorrow.